Welcome. Today's lesson is made especially for IB Biology, SL Option C, and HL Extension material. 4.3. Explain the light-dependent reactions. 4.4. Explain photophosphorylation in terms of chemiosmosis. And 4.5. Explain the light-independent reactions. The structure of a chloroplast the organelle of photosynthesis. The light-dependent reaction occurs on these tiny disks or thylakoids which float within the stroma, the fluid-filled medium in the chloroplast. Several of these hollowed-out disks make up a granum. Within the hollowed out disc is a fluid filled area and a membrane which has a structure very similar to the fluid mosaic structure of the cell membrane. The thylakoid membrane itself is home to two centers of chlorophyll which when exposed to photons of light, electrons in these molecules become energized or excited, transferred to a structure located within the hydrophobic area of this thylakoid membrane bilayer, a molecule known as plastoquinone. Initially, one plastoquinone receives two electrons and then it moves out of the way and allows another plastoquinone to receive two more electrons, meaning that four electrons in total are transferred out of this center known as photosystem two. These electrons move over a range of acceptor molecules, eventually transferring to the liquid-filled inner thylakoid area and to a hydrophilic molecule known as plastocyanin. As this transfer occurs, it releases sufficient energy for hydrogen ions to be moved from the outer thylakoid or the stroma, where concentration of the ions are fairly high, to the lower concentration area in the inner thylakoid moving these ions against a concentration gradient using the energy released from the transfer of electrons. With this void or missing set of electrons created here in the molecules of the photosystem 2, it makes the system in need of electrons. To put that another way, it makes it into a very strong oxidizing agent, something that has the ability to encourage water molecules to undergo a breakup into hydrogen ions, electrons which fill the void in photosystem two and the byproduct of this disintegration or photolysis of water is oxygen. And this is where the oxygen produced in photosynthesis comes from. Oxygen is entirely a waste product in photosynthesis, being produced as a result of the photolysis of water. As these reactions occur on photosystem 2, a similar process is happening on photosystem 1 as electrons become energized and transferred to ferridoxin, another acceptor, this one on the outside of the thylakoid membrane. The void created here is filled by the electrons from plastocyanin, which are transferred down into this region. 
the electrons that are passed to ferridoxin associate with free hydrogen ions to allow for the acceptor to become reduced and to produce NADPH and H+. In the absence of NAD+, which can sometimes occur, these electrons are channeled back through the transfer system, giving an example of cyclic photophosphorylation. But most often, NADP is present and the electrons are transferred to NADP to allow for the formation of reduced NADP or NADPH. This is known as non-cyclic photophosphorylation and it makes the first key product of the light-dependent reaction, NADPH, the source of hydrogen that provides the reducing capacity required to manufacture glucose. Before we can consider the light independent phase of photosynthesis, we must explain the manufacture of the other key ingredient of the light dependent reaction. That ingredient is ATP. And throughout the light dependent reaction, a high concentration of hydrogen ions has been building inside the space of the thylakoid membrane. This buildup was brought about because of the transfer of electrons, which forced hydrogen ions from the outer thylakoid and into the inner thylakoid. With the high concentration of hydrogen ions in the inner thylakoid, they move through the membrane by diffusion from the area of high concentration to low concentration. They are channeled through the enzyme ATP synthase, which runs as a transmembrane structure. And in doing so, the energy released is used to manufacture ATP from ADP and phosphate. And ATP is the second key ingredient. So with these two key ingredients, ATP and NADPH, as the products of the light dependent reaction. And with these two products automatically delivered into the fluid filled space inside of the chloroplast, known as the stroma, recalling that ATP manufacture was happening on the outside of the thylakoid as energy was released, and that NADP was reduced from electrons sent from ferridoxin also on the outside of the thylakoid. Now we can examine the associations between the products of the light dependent phase which occurred in the thylakoid and the light independent phase which is happening in the stroma of the chloroplast. For this light independent phase to function, chloroplasts require a special acceptor molecule known as ribulose bisphosphate or RUBP. This five carbon double phosphorylated structure associates with carbon dioxide in the presence of the enzyme rubisco, ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. And it is through this enzymatic process that a six carbon structure that's highly unstable is formed and it quickly dissociates into two molecules of glycerate 3-phosphate. 
These two molecules of glycerate 3 phosphate utilize the ATP and the energy that it's able to release and the hydrogen from the NADPH to be converted into the three carbon structure triose phosphate or TP. Much of this TP is used to regenerate ribulose bisphosphate and some of it is set aside to combine with other TPs to form the six carbon building block. This six carbon molecule is glucose. But a key part of this reaction and much of its resources has to be devoted to regenerating RUBP so that the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction can occur on a continuous basis. So it is important to note that carbon dioxide only enters into the photosynthetic process in this light independent phase in the stroma and the two key components of the light dependent phase are NADPH and ATP with the hydrogens and the electrons coming from the photolysis of water and the oxygen that photosynthesis produces is simply a waste product.